Hey guys, welcome to another lesson. And today we're looking at circular motion, right? So we have been through straight line motion, free fall. Now let's take it further to objects moving in a circle, right? So with objects moving in a circle, it moves at a constant speed, right? So each time you're turning an object in a circle, the object at every point on that circle actually has the same speed, right? Now, you might be wondering, how can an object with the same speed actually have an acceleration, right? So let's keep that in mind until we reach this point, all right? Now, the radian is the arc's length to its ra radius. So it's dividing the arc length, which is this S right here, over the radius of the circle. Because remember, objects moving in a circular pattern has a radius, which is from the center to the point on the line, right? So this theta angle here is known as your radiant, right? So your radiant is this section, so it's a section of your circle, which is covered by the length of the arc, which is S, and your radius r. Now, because we're moving in circles, a term that we normally hear with circular motion is angular, right? So angular tells us that this is not an object moving in a straight path, but it has an angle, so it's a circular object, circular motion, right? So angular velocity, which is noted by omega, so that's the w right there, it's the measure of how an angle changes with time, right? So remember, in just linear motion, velocity is how displacement changes with time. Now, because we're going in a circle, it's basically the angle that changes with time, right? So you're going around a circle, so you're creating an angle from the start point here. So let's say we're starting here. So at this point, it takes one second. Right? So it's this angle that is created from here to here, which is theta, over the time it takes, right? And then we move to centripetal acceleration. Now the word centripetal means center seeking, right? So this acceleration is seeking to go to the center of your circle, right? So therefore it's always perpendicular to the object's linear velocity, right? So let's look at those terms based on our diagram here. Right? So in this case, this circular object is going in a clockwise motion. Right? So the red arrows represent our linear velocity. Right? So that's V. So linear velocity around the circle always acts tangential to, to that circle. Right? So drawing a tangent at any point on the circle, you get your linear velocity. Right? Now, if we note the blue one here, it goes in the same path as the circle. And this one is called your, your angular velocity. All right? So your angular velocity goes with the circle, while your linear velocity goes tangential to your circle, right? Now, since these values V, at any point on the circle, these V values would be the same value, right? Because it's moving constant speed. So your velocity is the same, right? But the direction is what makes it that we have an acceleration. Because remember, if objects are going down, it has a negative velocity. If it's going to the left, it has a negative. If it's going up, a positive. If it's going right, a positive, right? So because you have consistent change of direction when the object goes around, then that means you're creating acceleration of the object, even if the magnitude of the velocity is the same. So because the direction changes, then we have an acceleration, right? So the equations that we normally use with centripetal or circular motion is 
delta, delta theta, and remember theta there is your radian, right? So your angle is you're changing your s over r, which we just stated, right? And we have angular velocity, which is equal to your change in angle over change in time, which we already looked at. So now we have linear velocity. So this velocity here is equal to your radius times your angular velocity, all right? Or T represents your period or your periodic time is two pi omega or T equals one over F and F there means your frequency, right? So therefore, omega angular velocity is equal to two pi F frequency, right? Now we have or Acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, is v squared over r. V squared v is your linear velocity, or could be replaced with r omega squared. Right. So these equations are very important when it comes to circular motion. Right. Now, centripetal force. So because objects are moving in a circular manner, right. It experiences a force, it produces a force that always seek to go to the center of the circle. So remember, I said here that centripetal means center seeking. So this is a center seeking force, right? So the direction of that force always tends to want to go to the center in order to balance the object and keep it in a circular path, right? So the purpose of the centripetal force is, also, is to ensure that we get a continuous circle being created. But we have a fictitious force, right, which is known as a centrifugal force, which is opposite direction to your centripetal. So your centripetal goes towards the center, your centrifugal is going in the opposite direction, right? Now, this centripetal force, Fc, is calculated by mv squared over r, and remember v represents your linear velocity, or if you want to use angular velocity, it's mr omega squared. But this part we normally use regular or centripetal force. Right? Now, in centripetal force, or with circular motion, it either can go in a vertical plane, so like creating a circle like this, or we can create a circle in a horizontal plane, which is like this, right? So we're going to look at which we'll focus on is our vertical circles, right? So circles that move in this manner, right? So just imagine you have a stone on a string and you're making circles with it like this, right? So in this case, we're going to identify all our forces that would be present there, right? Because because the object is moving in here, in a circular manner, then that means the same forces, same direction forces, will be equal to the opposite forces. So when you add it, you get a zero. So the net force on each object at the point of the object at each point here would be zero. All right? So let's go. So a hint here is that the three forces, since we're using a string, we have the tension force, T, we have the weight of the object, W, and we have Fc. So those are the three forces that we are going to do. Right. So to remember which direction each force goes, two of those forces always go the same direction. Right? So the weight of any object, gravity always acts downwards. Right? So the weight of any object always acts down. So we can add those to, so every down force is a weight, right? So we can call this one weight. This is weight, only one going down. We can call this one weight as well, right? So we've eliminated weight, right? Another one that is always the same direction is your tension. Your tension force will always act towards the center of the circle, right? So in this case, this is the next one towards the center, T, right? This is our center, T. This is going to the center, T, 
this is going to the center T. Right? So all these forces go into the center. That is our tension force from the strain. So that leaves us with FC. Right? So therefore, FC would be this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Right? So now you might be wondering, here we just said that centripetal force means in your center-seeking force. But in all of these cases, that is not the case, right? So what could have caused this centripetal force to be going up rather than be coming into the center, right? Now, another part of centripetal force is also, remember I said, it's the force that causes it to keep going in a circle, right? So if the object is at the top, these forces will not change direction, right? So they are always going down. So in order for you to get the object when it's at the top, to continue in a circular motion, the system actually creates a centripetal force to go out to keep it moving in a, in a circle, right? Same thing here, right? So by chance, right, if we have an inward force for it to continuously so swinging, some, swinging an object, right? if there is an inward force coming into this object, we have to have an outward force. right? So because tension is going in, centripetal is going, has to be going out to keep it in a circular motion. And the same thing here, and same thing there. Right? So don't just think that centripetal force always acts to the center. It's that the important force that causes the object to continuously move in a circular manner, all right? So that's it about circular motion, guys. And I hope you understand something today and see you guys next time.